What up, everybody? Trailer Mike live from Ripley, Oklahoma, for tonight's championship action game as your Preg Red Devils will play the Kiefer Trojans for, like I said, the finals of the Walking F Ranch tournament here in Ripley. Um, about a minute 42 and left until the tip-off. Um, guys, we're in the corner tonight. Uh, just happens that way. Uh, Kiefer played in the finals of the girls game just before us, and they have all of their stuff set up on the whole middle of the thing, so we kind of got what was left in the corner. Um, there's a whole bunch of people here tonight, so we'll do our best. It's really not as bad as I thought it was going to be, um, as, as long as this guy gets out of our way eventually. But, uh, um, yeah, a good uh, win for the girls earlier, kind of a blowout type, really good win, probably the best game they played together as a team this year. Um, to um, win the third place game uh, in the ladies bracket. So that's some hardware already in the bank for Preg tonight and hopefully we take another championship and I believe this is either going to be the fifth or the sixth year in a row that Preg will win this if we do pull this one out. So um, yeah, the starting lineup's getting ready to, uh, to come out. Preg will be the home team wearing all white with the red numbers. Kiefer, the exact opposite. They're all red with white. <coughs> Me and Trell did get to watch the uh, Kiefer guys play yesterday. They're a pretty solid team, but I think if we play the way we should be, we should handle business and uh, and take on the W here tonight. I love Coach Greer's rocking the all black uh, suit and tie, or not suit and tie, but like shirt with yeah, a white shirt. tie. Yeah, <laughs> and it's got this bright white tie on. So um, we'll introduce the Kiefer starters first as we get ready to tip this one off. Kiefer plays a lot like we do. They're very fast. They're very long. They're very athletic. Um, so hopefully our boys shoot the ball pretty well tonight. Rebound the ball pretty well. Stay out of foul trouble, and I think we'll be okay. A lot of red in this gym tonight. A lot of red. So the starting lineup for the Kiefer Trojans. Senior number 24, Kyler Holt. Junior number five, Caden Routon. Junior number two, Jack Harris. Senior number one, Camden Rector. And number zero, Braden Barber. I do not have a coach. It's not listed here, so I can't tell you who's coaching the Kiefer, but that nice young gentleman across the way in the suit, I'm assuming, is the head coach. And now the starting lineup for your Preg Red Devils. Junior, number 23, Trevor McGinnis. Number 14, senior Trip, the floor general Davis. 10, Nate Hollywood Luster, number three, Blustin the Machine Miller, and last but not least, Peyton the Gazelle Ezel. And of course, the Red Devils coached by Nate Greer, assisted by A.J. Woodall. So again, Trevor gets his, what, second start of the year to yeah, the I, I think I heard Coach Greer after the first game. He said he wanted to try something new. I guess they were. Well, oh, I, I'm a 100% believe that this, that's a, it's a matchup thing. It's it's not a high towers not as good. I think it's probably just a matchup. Um, Trevor's you know, bigger down low. He can handle these taller kids. Well, and uh, one thing that's good about basketball, if he doesn't like it in the first five seconds, you can always sub him out. Yeah. So here we go. Nate Lester set to jump number five. Caden Routon. 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 Let's go ahead and get eight on the clock, and let's get this game going. Here we go, live from Ripley. Well, somebody, we won the tip. I think we won the tip, but it was tipped out by a Trojan in favor of the Red Devils. So Lester will inbound on the far end away from Trell and I. He gives it back, he gives it to the floor general here, and here we go. Miller on the wraparound, over to Lester on the right wing. Gets it stripped away, but he gets it back. And there's an early steal by Kiefer. That's number two, Jack Harris. The first two points of the game for Kiefer off the steal. David has it in the corner. Cross-court pass to Lester at the top of the key. 
30 seconds have gone by. And Lester's going to get called for the carry as he hits the three. And now we have a discussion between one of the refs and the Kiefer coach. No, and we're back in business. Two to nothing. Kiefer with the early lead. This is Rector guarded by Lester. Spin move. Goes up strong. It's off the mark. Gets the offensive put back. And again, an offensive rebound and two turnovers thus far that do not go in favor of Prague. Davis has it out to Blusted Miller on the left wing. He pumps fakes. Drives in the middle. Tries to kick it to McGinnis, and it's stolen by number 24, Kyler Holt. That'll be the third turnover. Untouched layup by number zero, Braden Barber. Puts Kiefer up six to nothing already. Lester for a three from right wing. It's off. Rebound number 24. That is Holt. 6.30 left in the first. Preg yet to score. Kiefer not having that problem at all thus far. As number zero, Barber, straight up jumper from the free throw line, and Kiefer has yet to miss, and Preg has yet to make. 6.15 left. Ooh, that's it. It's interfering with the net. You can't touch the net. Missed by Trip Davis on the left-handed layup, and it goes the other direction. Three by number five. It's way off the mark. Oh, another offensive rebound by Kiefer. Make that two offensive rebounds by Kiefer. This is 24 Holt underneath. He'll be fouled by Trevor McGinnis. Number two, Jack Harris and Barber each had a offensive rebound that possession too. And if you give a team four possessions in one possession, chances are they're probably going to score. 24 Kyler Holt to shoot two right here. Blustin Miller picks up his first. I just noticed on the back of Keeper's jerseys, it has their number, and instead of having their name, it says family across the back. That's pretty cool. And now we're down double digits already, and we haven't scored yet. 5.53 left in the first. Still a lot of basketball left, but we got to get something going here. Near still by Harris again. Bluston has it, guarded by Harris. Gives it to Ezell. And he's going to get hand-checked by number zero, Braden Barber, as he falls down, and a, the first foul for Kiefer is on the board. Lester to Davis at the top of the key. He's going to jack up a three here. It's off the front of the rim. Again, rebound Holt for the Trojans. Barber loses the handle. Davis will scoop it up. He'll try to take it coast to coast. No, he's going to ditch it to Ezell underneath the goal, and he's fouled by two or three Trojans. I think number 24, Kyler Holt, will pick up his first. Second team foul for the Trojans as Ezell goes to the line to shoot two here. 5.21 left in the first. Bear with me. I'm losing my voice, so hopefully I can keep it the rest of the game. If I can't, I'll let Trill do it. Ezell's first is off the back of the iron and no good. Craig still yet to score. Ezell's second is good. Finally, Preg gets on the board. Barber over to Rector. Now Holt. Guarded by McGinnis. This is Jack Harris, guarded by Davis. Oh, stripped away by McGinnis. Excellent strip. And Lester's got it, and he loses it. But Ezell picks up the loose, and he's fouled underneath on the right-hand side. So Ezell's going to go to the line and shoot two more. 4.52 left in the first, down by nine. Foul's going to be called on number one, Camden Rector, his first in the third team foul against Kiefer. Peyton hits his second of third field goal or uh, free throws already this game. Yeah. 
That one's off the mark. Ooh, McGinnis saves it in, gets it to Davis. Davis is under the goal. Reverse hand left. Let's go. Trip the floor general Davis. Heads up play there by Trevor McGinnis to save that ball. And at least we've scored some points here. Six point game now, 10 to four. 4.52 and the clock's not running. I don't, I don't know the clock's just not running. McGinnis with the steal there, dishes it out to Lester. Oh, nice move by Nate Lester. He can't finish it though. It's off Jack Harris with the rebound. Clock still isn't running. We're just playing free basketball right now with 4.52 left in the first. There's a three attempt by number one, Camden Rector, that's good. No, nobody in this gym knows the clock isn't running but me. I think Coach Greer just realized it. It's still not running. Still 4.52 left in the first. I guess we're going to play like a 20-minute first quarter. Yeah, the, the clock hasn't been running for like two minutes. <laughs> okay, now they got it. <laughs> like that was like two minutes worth of the clock not running. No, it was like six seconds. Didn't you just see the change? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Kiefer ball, thirteen to four, nine point game. This is Routon with the ball, guarded by Bluston Miller. Bluston almost had a steal Backdoor there. Backdoor cut. Gets it underneath the Holt. Holt misses it. Bounced around. Then Jack Knocked Harris it gets it. Good strip there by, uh, I believe it was Ezell that got the strip there. Now Davis has it. Running down the middle of the court. Backdoor cut to Ezell. No good. Stolen by number zero, Barber. Now Kiefer's off and running. This Oh, good ball oh. by Lester. Lester can't quite get to that one as Barber scores two more. 15 to four now, it's 11, as Davis goes up for two in the middle of the lane, and he's fouled. I believe they're gonna get number one, Camden Rector. His second personal. And Davis gets to shoot two, and we got a timeout, Coach Greer, much needed. As we're already down by 11, with not even halfway through the first quarter. Well, <laughs> it's kinda half in like two minutes. But uh, we'll be back after the timeout. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Ortho Plus is an orthopedic urgent care. If you go to a regular emergency room, you're gonna be evaluated by somebody who does everything. With Orthopedic Urgent Care and with Keith Holloman, you're getting an orthopedic trained physician assistant. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day. All right, Davis's first free throw is good. Cuts it within 10, 15 to 5, 404 showing on the clock. No idea how much time it will actually play as he misses the second one. Rebound number zero, Barber. Ezell's got Barber as he brings it up the court. Barber's going to take it all away. He's fouled by Ezell. He'll shoot two. Basket is no good. Peyton's first foul. Team's only second foul. Peyton's upset about something. First free throw is no good. Barber's second is up and no good. And Davis somehow comes up with the uh, defensive rebound there. He'll take it up the third. He's just going to kick it out to Ezell. Ezell's got it in the corner. Dribbles it out. Gives it to Lester at the top of the key near the timeline. Now Davis on the left wing. Kicks it down to McGinnis, who tries to get it back out to Lester, but it's a bad pass. Uh, missed him to the left. I, th I think uh, Trevor thought he was more towards the bench when he had kind of snuck over into the corner, and that'll be another turnover. We have number three, Trent Sweeney, on the court now for 
the Kiefer Trojans. This is Holt with it. Ooh, stripped away by Trip Davis. We got numbers, two on one. Davis passes it to Lester, and it'll be a block foul called on the floor by number three, Trent Sweeney, as he tried to take the charge, but wasn't able to get set. So that'll be an on the floor foul as Lester to inbound underneath the Kiefer goal. Kicks it out to Ezel on the left wing. Ezel's going to drive. It's kind of hold. He was kind of held, too, and he still got it off. Made the shot on the floater. Good job, Peyton Ezel right there. And, of course, Barber bringing it up the floor so far. He's got kind of got the hot hand for Kiefer. He's going to kick it out to number five. Routon, whose three is off the marks, bounced away. Nate Lester comes up with it. He's off and running. He's taking He's it. He's going against Sweeney. And Sweeney's going to get two fouls really quick back-to-back -back and send Nate Lester to the line to shoot two. 2.49 left in the first. Let's see if Lester can make the deficit around six. That's number 33, Cameron the Flying Dutchman Hightower is set to enter the game. I would assume he's probably going to come in for McGinnis, and that is the case. What do you know? Get pretty good at predicting this stuff. It's only my 900,000th game. Is it 8 to 15? Yeah, okay. I didn't put Nate's first free throw on there. All right, so Nate's second is up. It's good. Got within six now. See if he can chew in this a little bit. We just got to hold this barber guy right here to make him pass the ball. Seems like when we get it out of his hands, things go better for us. As he's deed up by Ezel. Ezel's got him at the free throw line. Kicks it out to Harris. Harris in the left corner. He'll swing it back around, and it'll go through Rector's hands, who's guarded by Lester right now. Backdoor cut by Barber. Kicks it all the way out to Holt. Holt stripped by either Hightower or Ezel right there. Looks like Hightower kind of hit the ball away, and Ezel caught it for him. So now Red Devil's off and running. Lester's got it on the right wing. Gets it out to Davis to reset the offense. Top of the key. Tripp's been pretty good this game at driving. Just got to be better at finishing. So see what happens. Davis is going to go to the right-hand side. Shoot up a fadeaway off the wow. glass. Wow. I mean, hey, just like we say in football, that's some Tripp Davis stuff, man. You, you Normal people don't do stuff like that. That's money, do. So we got it within four now, 15 to 11. 151 in the first. Barber over to number five, Caden Routon. He's down on Holtz, got it down on the block now. Kicks it out to number one, Rector. Back to Holtz. All kinds of bodies flying as the ball goes up. It's no good. Davis comes down with it. Kind of got lucky there. Just come right to his hands. High Trips going the baseline here. He's going to kick it back out to Lester. Good thing he's got long arms. Lester driving in the in the lane. Finger rolls it, gets his own rebound, unable to convert. Holt. As Holt gets the off or defensive rebound there. Big rebound by Holt. 115 left in the first. This is Jack Harris, two-pointer from the right wing, is off the mark. Another big rebound by Trip Davis. As he wants to run with it. He'll do so, goes up strong, unable to convert. Ooh, Ezel strips it away from number one. Rector kicks it out for a three. It's off the mark. I believe that was Ezel shooting that one. Cross-court uh, pass to Harris. That was Harris, Lester. same shot on the right-hand side. That okay. was Lester with the shot earlier. Gotcha. I was looking at my sheet. So a bunch of misses here by both teams in the last couple of minutes or so. Preg has it 35 seconds. I can't even see this clock. I have to, like, bend around the goal to see it. 30 seconds. Davis has it at the top of the key. 22. Lustin 20. from the left wing. Now Lester has it. Kicks it down to Hightower. Working on Holt. Spin move. He's double team. Kicks it out to Ezell. Ezell's going to go towards the middle, and they're going to call a three-second violation. No shot. They're going to get, um, I believe, Hightower for three seconds. Yeah. So there's, what, tw is there two tw seconds? Tw 12 seconds. 12.28 left. In the first. Here we go. Jack Harris, number two, has it for the Trojans. Guarded by Davis. Kicks it over to Rector. Rector now guarded by a Lester. Out to number five. Routon for three. Count it. And he lets the bench know that he made that. And the lead is back up to seven. 18 to 11 at the end of the first quarter. So if you're just joining us, this is the end of the first quarter in the Walking F Ranch Classic Tournament. 
here in Ripley, Oklahoma, championship game of the guys as Craig comes out pretty flat as we have the last couple of games and couldn't hit anything. See if we can turn it on here in the second quarter as Kiefer jumped out to a 10-0 lead very quick. And Preg has kind of whittled it down to seven. Um, we had it within four at one point, but it's back up to seven now as a big three was hit at the end of the quarter. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a second. Ready. Dr. Dieselhorse works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation, and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorse Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorse get you back on the field, backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. All right, here we go. We're back. Trail of Mike Live from Ripley. I think we play Tuesday, don't we? Uh, yeah, Chandler Lions at Chandler, I believe. Pretty heated rivalry. Make sure you tune into it. Yeah, Chandler didn't win a game all tournament. Not no, they won it. the last one. Oh, they did. Yeah, in the last seconds. All right, Kiefer's got the ball to start the second quarter. This is Barber. Guarded by Zell. What a screen. He's not going to get it. Now Jack Harris guarded by Tripp Davis. There's a screen. We have a sub, number 14. I don't have a 14 on my roster, so I'll get his name as soon as I can. This is number one. Rector with the shot. It's off the mark. Rolls out. Banged around, and Barber comes up with the offensive rebound. Pump faked. Going to draw the foul and count the bucket. Lester's going to pick up his first foul. I think it's the – I don't know. I can't see the team fouls, guys. Sorry. We're like, um, tucked away in the corner. I believe it's six fouls that's, for that's that visitor. for them. I don't know the exact number for Prey. Number three comes back into the game, Trent Sweeney. Number one, Camden Rector will sit. Shots off the mark. Barber's free throw is no good. 20 to 11 the score, 7-14 and a half. Davis, he's trapped by about four different or three different Trojans, and he's going to be fouled. The foul is going to be on number three, Trent Sweeney. That's his third. So he'll exit the game again for a rector will come back in for him. So Trip Davis set to shoot a one and one is, as uh, we are now in the bonus, but that's good with seven minutes left. Maybe we'll get them all in foul trouble. Craig has a sub right there. Hollywood Lester's going to take a seat. And number four, the stretch, Eli Bias, is going to come in for him. One and one first attempt is no good by Davis. Just over seven minutes left in the half. This is Barber. Now Routon has it. This is number 14, oh. big block by the Flying Dutchman. But again, we can't capitalize on it as Jack Harris comes up with it, and Ezell's going to get a foul. This number two, Jack Harris guy, is coming down with everything. He's getting it off the floor, up in by the rim, everywhere. He is just, like, scrappy. He's really good at it, though. Barber set the inbound for the Trojans, gets it out to Rector. He's on the right wing, guarded by Bias. Now over to Jack Harris, guarded by Davis. A pretty good matchup. I got a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot of that tonight. Barber still has it now. Still guarded by Ezell. Tries to go baseline. Cameron Hightower picks him up. He's double teamed down low. There's nowhere to go with it. Gets it out to number 14. And we'll try to get his name. Then we're going to have a three seconds in the lane called against Kiefer. I thought they called that on Cameron Hightower. No, that was a, they. Well, they called they called Cameron for three seconds. I'm okay with the, it as long as they call it consistently. I, I get no problem with that. You can't camp out in the lane. I get it. 
I, I thought they called it on him right there whenever he was posting that guy up. You can't, you can't get defensive three seconds. I didn't think you could. But. You can't in the NBA. All right, Hightower has it now down the corner. Guarded by number 14. Gets it to Ezell, wrapping around him. Back, Tried to get it back to Hightower, and it's stolen by number 14 again. And I, as soon as the break, I'll ask these guys over here what this guy's name is. And here we go. Ezell versus Barber on the right-hand side of the court at the moment. Barber's going to take him. Or try to take him. He'll back it off. Give it to Jack Harris on the right side, guarded by Davis. Now this is Routon. I'm sorry, Rector. Guarded by Bias. Back out to Harris. He walked. <clears throat> Rare turnover by Kiefer there. So Bluston Miller has it now at the top of the key. He's guarded by Harris. Now Davis guarded by Rector on the right-hand wing. He'll dribble towards the middle, gives it to Cameron Hightower up top. Now back to Davis. Cameron Hightower, the big hook shot with the left hand is off the mark. Rebound number 14, Jackson Worley. And now Barber has it, and there's nobody on him. He's going to take a straight shot. Oh, big block by Tripp Davis. Now Tripp's going this way with it. He'll throw it up and score. Oh, man, what a block by Davis. <clears throat> and we're back to seven. Barber has it again on the right wing. Yeah, we weren't, we weren't ready. Tri uh, somebody got caught up. Oh, good strip there by Bluston Miller. Now Davis has it, right-hand side. Bluston's in the corner. Davis goes towards the middle. Fakes the pass and goes up and in, and Tripp is going off. Tripp's got him all tripping now, boys. The locks the lover in full effect in the comeback as Preg has cut it within five. 4.36 left in the half, and I, Tripp faked me and Trell out three times in about 30 seconds right there. Wow. <laughs> Uh, man, I'm telling you, this, this barber kid is really good. He's super athletic, and he can jump. And Davis is about six inches shorter than him and went up with him and blocked that shot. <laughs> uh, wow, what a, what a sequence of events there. So at least we've got it within five. Maybe we can close this down before half and kind of reset the game at halftime. Craig's a big-time second-half team. Well, I mean, we came back in the second quarter yesterday, but... You forget how much we were down in the first quarter of yesterday's game. It was yeah. like 13-3 to three at one point. Uh, yeah. We ended up winning by what, 15? <laughs> so here we go. And like I said, man, I, th I think we'll be okay if we can just keep the barber, the number zero, Braden Barber, the junior, under control because he, I think he, he's by far probably their best athletic person on the floor. So we're going to switch it up. Ezell's going to have a seat. Now uh, Bluston gets the job of Garden Barber as Lester switches over to Rector. Backdoor cut. This is number 14, Worley, guarded by Hightower. Up and good. 22 to 15 now the score. Right at the halfway point in the second quarter. Lester has it trying to get it down to Hightower. Cross-court pass to Stretch. Now Bluston has it, back to Bias. Bias in the corner, back to Bluston. Bluston kind of quiet this game thus far. Lester's gonna drive, nope. He's gonna dance with it a little bit. He's at the free throw, kicks it out to Davis. Left wing three is short. Rebound Worley, number 14 for the Trojans. And they'll go the other way with it. 3.39 left in the half. Craig can work on their rebounds just a little bit more. It tremendously help us. It's Jack Harris with the jumper. That's good, so <coughs> Kiefer comes out, scores a quick four points to start this quarter to open the lead back up to nine. Weston driving baseline. He'll throw a floater up. A lot of contact with Barber. Gets his own rebound, and again a lot of contact, but Weston got it again, and finally we get a whistle as Weston had to really work for that one. Jackson Worley. 
his second foul, or I'm sorry, first foul, number 14. Bluston to shoot two here. First one's off. Number two, Jack Harris will take a seat. This is number 23, Cooper Schof, entering the game for the first time. And it's going to be good. Second one's good, yep. Cuts the lead to eight. Barber to bring the ball up, guarded by Miller. Barber gives it out to number one, Camden Rector. Now number five, Routon has it. Three ball by Routon is good. And we're back to double digits, 11. This is Lester from the free throw, loses the ball. And that'll be another turnover by Preg. I believe that was Routon that got the strip there. As Barber was wanting to take Bluston to the hole. Pump fake, shot's no good. Bluston comes down with the board. Ooh, backdoor cut to Eli Bias. A good block. Ooh, they called a foul that I didn't he think gets, was a foul that time. He kind of ran him over, I think. Well, yeah, it didn't really affect the shot at all. That was a pretty clean block right there by Barber. E either way, Barber's going to get another foul. That's his second personal as Eli gets to shoot two here. And the next foul puts Preg in the double bonus, so they'll shoot two from here on out as Bias misses that free throw. I bet we're, what, 30% free throw shooting right now? If that... And the woes continue at the free throw line for the Red Devils as Bias misses both of them. 2.15 left in the half. Routon has it now over to, I'm sorry, this is Routon. That was Barber to Routon. Down to number 14, Royley. Kicks it out to number 23, Shove Bombs another three, and Kiefer can't miss. So, I, I'm... I mean, it's, it's frustrating when they, they just flat can't miss as, as Davis will try a three. Ooh, Ooh. Big, big counter to that as Trip Davis has really shown up to play tonight. 144 left in the half. Barber wants him on the left-hand side. Almost stolen by Lester. Then it is stolen by Bluston Miller. Bluston's going to go all the way with this. Uncontested. And Preg gets five of them back, right back real quick to cut it to single digits at nine. 21 to 30. 125 left in the half. Preg going to a trap now, trying to change it up. As Bias has got his hands full at the moment. Really good pass to Worley. Oh. And Lester throws his stuff out of bounds. And that's a great play by Nate right there. And we're going to have a whole bunch of subs here. So McGinnis is going to come in for Bias. Jack Harris is going to come in back in. And Holt's going to come back in. 23. Shof is going to set, as well as Worley, number 14, for the uh, Trojans. So it's going to be uh, Kiefer Ball underneath the Preg goal. Barber inbound. Look for him to get it back as soon as he throws it in. And we're going to have a foul, I guess. Yep, Nate Lester is going to pick up his second personal. Ref didn't like the hand check as Shof is going to check back in for Barber. And so is Ezel. Ezel's coming in for Nate Lester. Nate's only got two, though. I think Coach Greer is trying to save a little bit of Nate's energy. He thinks Nate could come in like he did the past few games, come in clutch that last quarter. That was poked away out of bounds by Trip Davis, but Preg got away with one there. As we got 110 left in the half. Davis has it on the left-hand side, guarded by Harris. Nate er, uh, Davis dribbles to the corner, kicks it to Hightower. Now swings it around to Bluston Miller. Now Ezell has it, gives it to Hightower underneath, back to Ezell. Ezell pump fakes, Ugh, and almost gets it. And Ezell wants that one back because he knows he should have made that layup. Either way, he's going to shoot two free throws right here. Foul is going to be on number five, Caden Routon, his first. And uh, Kiefer's been in the double bonus for a while. I don't know if it's, are we in the double bonus or are they in the bonus? We're in the double bonus because we get the free throws, right? Either way, Kiefer has way more than ten fouls this half. As, again, free throw woes continue for Preg. I would say we're in the double bonus. Yeah, we're in the double bonus. Yeah. 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 Well, we're running this show, so I'm pretty much we can say what we want to. But With Either way, Kiefer has more than 10 fouls, so we get to shoot free throws. 
54 yeah. seconds left in the half, and the second free throw is off. And <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. I've never seen us shoot this bad at the free throw line. We just can't make anything. Yeah, anywhere. You're right. Thirty-six seconds left in the half. This is Harris, guarded by Davis. Now Routon, guarded by Ezell, and that's a rare turnover by Kiefer as he was looking for Holt over here and just flat threw it away. And we'll take it with 24 seconds left in the half. Davis will be guarded by Harris up top here. Over to Ezell. Ezell's got it on the right wing. Tries to get it down to Hightower and does. Guarded by Holt. Cameron's going to a little hook shot with the left hand. It gets his own rebound after the miss. Kicks it out to Ezell. Ezell for three. It's all in and out. And we're going to have an over the back foul by Cameron Hightower. As McGinnis checked in at some point there and I, that I missed, I think. He checked in for bias. Seven minutes or seven seconds left in the half as Preg's going to go full court press and I have to give them a chance to run down here. Man to man. Now this is Schoaf with it. He's going to try to make something happen right here. A little running floater and nails it. So that pretty much sums up how the night has gone so far in the first half as uh, their like seventh or eighth player off the bench just hits a running, floating, whatever it was that goes in. And we have a 33 to 21 game at halftime. All I got to say is they better hope to God we don't catch on fire because I, I got a feeling that, we, you know, once you do so bad, you want to come back and do so good. That, that if, if, if we could hit hatred. half of our free throws or half of our shots, we would be running away with this game. It's that burning hatred that Craig comes out with the second half. Man, I don't think it's lack of effort. I don't think it's lack of trying. I don't think it's like, you know, we're not whining. We're not crying. It's just that, man, we cannot hit anything. We can't hit a free throw. We can't hit a basket. But the only person that really could hit anything that half was Tripp. And everybody knows basketball is a team sport. You can't do it by yourself. So hopefully the second half will come out shooting lights out, and then we'll put, put a – put a dagger in this one so all right we'll be back in the second half here in a little bit support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers talk about a win-win advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than ten dollars a game call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information Ortho Plus is an orthopedic urgent care. If you go to a regular emergency room, you're going to be evaluated by somebody who does everything. With orthopedic urgent care and with Keith Holloman, you're getting an orthopedic trained physician assistant. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and The pros with Squirtle Live. Find out more at squirtle.com slash stream. Score that perfect design at Touchdown Graphics just north of the curve in Pond Creek. They offer screen printing and embroidery on t-shirts, shorts, hoodies, and more. Show your spirit for your school, team, club, or special event with a custom design from Touchdown Graphics. Call 580-532-4579 or see them online at touchdowngraphics.com. Touchdown Graphics. It's good. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. 
We are Maples Nicks and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. The way you used to access healthcare previously, I think that's kind of out of date. I think Ortho Plus and Calvin were trying to get patients access to him and then have the assurance that you'll be referred to the right people. That's why I think the partnership is so good. When it comes to cellular service, why pay for data you don't use? Pioneer Cellular offers a variety of plans designed to give you the lowest prices on the data you and the others on your plan really need. That's why people all over are switching to Pioneer. Pioneer Cellular can save you money on your family plan, no matter how you define family. Do the math. Visit our website at gopioneer.com, call us at 800-641-2732, or stop by a local Pioneer store. Find out how much we can save you. Versatile Networks can handle all of your school or business technology and wiring needs. Expanding into a new building or office space, we would love to give you a free quote for your network wiring. Are your computers outdated? Are your servers slow? Is your network underperforming? Is your wireless network weak? Let Versatile Networks come in and assess the situation and get you back up and running the way you should be. Call Versatile Networks today at 405-217-0267 or visit versatilenetworks.com for more information. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Alrighty folks, Trell here, Big Mike's having to help out with Ripley's Squirtle team, they're having a few technical difficulties, he's over there trying to help them out. Um, we got about tw 10 seconds until the second half is going to start. Um, Preg, 
it's it goes without saying Prague's having a little bit of trouble shooting tonight we're gonna see if they can come out this second half Prague's been a big second half team to, for the beginning of the season and especially this tournament they've been a pretty decent second half team so we're looking to see what Prague can come out and do coming out of the locker room at halftime uh, here's Big Mike. He's coming back up here. I'm a lot faster and Big Mike's going to be out of breath for this one. Uh, I did my good deed for the day. I was helping the uh, Ripley people get their score to work out. So on the floor for Prague, Nate Lester, Trip Davis, Bluston Miller, uh, Trevor McGinnis, and Ezell. That's going to be a blessing with the ball. He's going to kick back out. They're trying to swing, see where they can get it open. Trips, contested, tries to get that pass to bless, or to, sorry, to Peyton. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't paying attention. I had to get a drink. Sorry, I can't hardly talk. So, All right, Dave's got it in the corner now, guarded by Harris. Gets it down to Lester, working on the block. Little fadeaway shot on the baselines off the mark. Rebound number five, Caden Routon. Routing on Miller here. He'll take it in. Miller stuffs it away. Lester picks up the loose ball. He's off to the races. He goes up strong, can't hit. McGinnis is there for the follow-up, and he'll score. He's routing with it. He's got nowhere to go. His blusting kind of... Knocks it away, but Routon gets it right back. This is Rector for three. Off the front of the mark, Bluston Miller's going to have it. Miller's still going. Behind the back, past two or three, he gets it hammered by Routon, but they're going to call a foul. Craig off to a pretty decent start in the third quarter, 6.42 left. We've got a 10-point game here in Ripley. Bluston gets to shoot two free throws here. And the first one is good. Yeah. Less than seconds good. Eight point game now. 25-33. Kiefer going left to right. Prague right to left now. As Barber has it versus Ezell. Ezell did a pretty decent job on him the first half. See if he can keep it up. Good deflected out of bounds by Lester. Trying to get the ball down to Caden Camden, Rector, on the right block. But Lester denies it out of bounds. Rector guarded by Lester. Rector will drive. Lester was there. Good shot by Camden, Rector. Give uh, Kiefer their first two points of the second half. Lester from the top of the creek, three. Bam! Count of one, two, three. Much needed three pointer by Lester right there. 35 29 now the score. 20, sorry, 35 28. This is Barber. Gets it down to Jack Harris dancing in the lane. That should be three seconds. Three seconds. Kick out three to Routon is no good. Offensive rebound by Kiefer. Now Rector has it guarded by Lester. He goes baseline. Lester blocks it. McGinnis kicks it over to Bluston. Bluston's got it. He's going to go up in the lane with it. Gets the friendly roll. And that's what we're on a roll now. Got it within five. Let's go, Red Devils. 522 left in the third. Timeout, Kiefer. Much needed. Excellent, excellent way to come out of the locker room as Prague has been smart, kept the ball away, only giving up a couple of shots here, um, and and we've ducked the lead down to five. So we'll be back after the timeout by Kiefer. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. 
Ortho Plus is an orthopedic urgent care. If you go to a regular emergency room, you're going to be evaluated by somebody who does everything. With orthopedic urgent care and with Keith Holloman, you're getting an orthopedic trained physician assistant. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. All right, we're back after the timeout. Barber set to inbound for the Trojans. Gets it to ja uh, Smith. Sorry, not Smith. Harris. Jack Harris. Harris still has it. He's trapped at the top. And Kiefer will swing it around to a wide open. Routon, or I'm sorry, Rector, whose three-pointer is off. Rebound, Trip Davis. Davis kick out to Wiesel. Going baseline with it. Back to Davis. Yes. Now Tripp's going to drive. Little shot just outside the free throw line goes in and out. McGinnis fighting for the rebound, but he won't get it. Number three, Trent Sweeney comes down with it. Cross-court pass is a little bit too hot for Jack Harris as he goes out of bounds, as I believe Barber threw that one away. Four thirty-eight left in the third. Davis has it now, guarded by Harris. Ooh, good backdoor putt cut by Lester. A little pump faking up and under is good for Nate Lester. And Preg is within three. We need a good defensive stop right here. Barber has yet to score the second half as Ezell picks his pocket again. And I'm telling you right now, Peyton Ezell is playing a heck of a game against this Barber guy because he is really good. And he has completely shut him down almost other than the first about five or six minutes of the game. Davis has it now. Kicks it to a running McGinnis out to a wide open. He's at the top of the key. It's off. Rebound Sweeney for the Trojans. Now back out to Rector who's going up the right-hand side. He'll be met by Ezell. Spin move. And we're going to have a traveling violation as he did a little spin move at the right-handed block, but the ref didn't like it and calls a walk. The patented you can't do that coming from the benches. as Tripp is in no hurry right here. 3.33 left in the third, and we're going to have a off-the-ball foul. I think they're going to get Trevor McGinnis on an illegal string as he tried to free up Lester. That's his third. So we still have a three-point game, 32-35, to 3.30 left in the third. I say a lot of threes right there. That's going to be Preg's first. Schof is checked into the game for Kiefer, who hit that runner at the end of the half. This is Jack Harris now over to Barber. Barber guarded by Ezell as usual. Now Holt on the block, guarded by Trevor McGinnis as he's double teamed. Holt to work his way into the inside. He had a wide open layup, just flat missed it. Gets mad and fouls Lester and then drops the F-bomb right in the middle of the court. Everybody heard that one. I heard it with my headset on. All right. So, Preg's got it now. Blusted Miller and Ezell playing a little pitch and catch here. As he as Blusted goes in the lane, he gets stripped, clean stripped by Holt as he redeems himself after missing that layup down there. And now Schof has it on the left-hand side and just throws it out of bounds. Preg's defense is looking really good this second half. Let's hope we can keep it up as number 14, Worley's going to check in for Kiefer. I didn't see who sat down. Uh, I think Holt sat down. That's right, Holt did sit down. And now Barber's going to sit down for number five, Caden Routon. Routon. I apologize if I'm, I butcher these names. I do my best. Davis now, been guarded by Jack Harris the whole, whole game. Davis beats him, looking for somebody to get rid of it. Tries to throw it down to McGinnis, throws it away, and then Kiefer throws it away. And this is, man, they're going to call Lester with a, with a charge here. 
Now, he, now hear me out on this play, Trill. I'm not saying that wasn't a charge, but I think Nate was fouled before he hit the second guy. I would agree there. I think it was a charge, but I think he was fouled before he made contact with yeah. the second guy. It wouldn't have been a charge if they would have called the previous foul. So another turnover by Preg. Still a three-point uh, three game. Yeah, 32-35. I really can't see the scoreboard. As Kiefer trying to work the ball down low. This is uh, Harris kicks it off to Worley. Now back to Harris. Now over to Rector. Back to Harris for a wide open three in the corners off the mark. Schof with the offensive rebound. Rector driving on Lester. Gets the left-handed layup to bounce off the glass and good to extend Kiefer's lead 37-32. Let's see if Preg can answer here. Weston Miller's going to drive in the middle of the lane. Pulls it back out and hits Ezell. Ezell's going baseline down to McGinnis. McGinnis with a spin move off the glass and good as Trevor makes good. 37-34 now. Back to a three-point game. This is Rector guarded by Lester. Ooh, knocked away. Ooh, he's almost out of bounds, but Rector's ever to recover and get it to show. Now show. Ooh, really hit the green at the line. This is Harris over to Worley. Worley with the right-handed jump shot, layup type shot is no good. Big, big monster rebound by Trevor McGinnis as he is mugged down low as soon as he gets his hands on it and will get a foul. Barber comes back in for Schof. Oh, 1-4, Worley gets the foul. That's his second. 105 left in the third. Davis guarded by Harris. Well, it's been all game. That now, Harris kid's pretty good, too. He, he's really good defensively. Really good. And that's why they probably put him on trip. Davis driving baseline now. Can't quite get his. his he wanted, he wanted, trip wanted to go reverse layup, but he's smart. Kicks it to Ezell, who's wide open on the block. A couple of pump fakes. And uh, Ezell's going to go to the line. And he got. Uh, you could have gave a foul to three different Trojans there. And they're going to pick up Worley again with a foul. That's his third. Hit our free throws. Come on. They're shooting on a different side now. It might be something different. That size hex. That's is. what it is. Dude, we couldn't do that last night either. On that side, we didn't make many free throws. We didn't Maybe. have as many opportunities. 46 there, seconds so. left. See if Bluston can get it within, or I'm sorry, Ezell can get it within one as Cameron Hightower checks in for Trevor McGinnis. Holt is back on the court for the Trojans as well. Peyton second is off. Ooh, Cameron almost had that offensive rebound. Instead, he used his head quite literally. Yeah, it hit him right in the back of the head. So we, Barber has it. We've done that quite a few times this tournament. Now Jack Harris guarded by Davis. Over to Rector guarded by Lester. Now Barber back up top. 22 seconds left. Ezell's right up in his face. Backs him all the way back up to the timeline almost. 15. Barber kicks it out to Routon for three. In and out. Ball still bouncing around. Davis saves it right to Holt. Back out to Routon Five. again for three. It's Four. off the mark. Punched out right to Barber. Barber Two. shots up and no One. good. That should be a jump ball. No shot. Jump ball. Good call there. And they're going to call the end of the third quarter. I don't know how the end of a quarter can end in a jump ball, but we'll call it that. Well, it's either that or you inbound it with like .5 seconds left or .4. Exactly. That's exactly what you do. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess. Either way, we'll put a minute on the clock. We'll be back with the end of this game. Preg's cut it down to two. We just got to finish it now. Phoenix. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. the pros with Squirtle Live. Find out more at squirtle.com slash dream. 
Score that perfect design at Touchdown Graphics just north of the curve in Pond Creek. They offer screen printing and embroidery on t-shirts, shorts, hoodies, and more. Show your spirit for your school, team, club, or special event. All right, here we go. Chill and I back live from Ripley. This is the championship game between the Kiefer Trojans and your Preg Red Devils. Preg currently down by two. Has been down as many as, what, 12 or 10 or whatever we've There's a lot more than we'd, than we'd like. Ooh, big block by Nate Lester on Jack Good Harris. Clean. He come out of nowhere and blocked that one. Looks like Nate kind of rolled his ankle down there. Looks nah, like he's fine. fine. Lester has it top of the key, guarded by Routon now. Now, Holt on. Ooh, good jump shot here just inside of the three-pointer by uh, Trip Davis is short. Rebound number five, Caden Routon. Routon. Barber and Ezell at the top of the key, just like it has been most of the game. That ball is knocked away, out of bounds by Bluston Miller. Kiefer will retain possession. Routon guarded by Miller. Now Barber and Ezell. He will not let Barber go left hand, left hand on him. Now this is Rector and Lester. Good dish to Holt as Cameron fronts him on the block. Back out to Jack Harris. Jump stop. Floater in the lane is off the glass of good. 39-35, four-point game now. As Bluston will kick it over to Davis. Davis down to Hightower. He's double teamed. Hightower gets it back out to Lester for three from the left. Oh! Bam! That's what we like to see. One-point game. As Kiefer wants to go fast here. 6.24 left in the game. Harris guarded by Davis. Harris is going to go left-handed off the glass. It's too hard. No good. Davis gets the rebound. Preg for a chance to take their first lead of the game as Davis is going to take it himself all the way. Going up hard. It's deflected, but they're going to call a foul either on Barber or I think they're going to get Holt. Trail. Kyler Holt, number 24, picks up his third, third. personal. Their fifth. 6.07 left in the game. 38 to 39, Preg down by one, but it's not going to be down by one very much longer as Davis hits the first one. We have a tie game now for the first time since we were 0 to 0. Sweeney checks in for the Trojans in place of Jack Harris, number two. Davis gets a friendly roll, and ladies and gentlemen, Preg has their first lead of the game, 40 to 39. Rector to take the ball up the court, guarded by Lester here. Now Holt on the block with Hightower on him. Now Barber, he's going to drive. Gets Ezell to roll that time. And the lead by Preg is short-lived as the Kiefer Trojans take it right back up by one. Good pass down low by Lester to Hightower. He can't hit the shot. Rebound Barber. God, we got to make those. Now Barber again from the free throw line. Off the glass and in. Keeper back up by three, 43 to zero, or 43 to 40, rather. Big three by Davis in the corner. It's good. Tie ball game. Wow. Bang, bang, bang. Count on one, two, three. Trip the floor general Davis to tie the game. And Preg is going to trap. Ooh, almost stolen by Davis. That leaves Sweeney wide open for three. No good. Holtz by himself underneath the goal. Gets the offensive rebound. But Bluston Miller quickly strips it away, and that's out of bounds against Preg. Huh. 4.59 left in the game. Why do we have to have nail biters? I don't like it. We've had all of them be like this. Holtz got it now, guarded by Hightowers. Quickly double teamed. Now Sweeney's wide open. Ooh, offensive foul. Yes! Bluston Miller takes the charge against number three, Trent Sweeney. And that'll be a turnover. I don't know what the fouls look like, so I can't tell you who's almost in the bonus or not. Um, we have a tie ball game at 43, though, with 450 left. I think Preg's one away from bonus. I can't see the other one from over here. But I believe Preg 
has six fouls against them. Kay. So, all right. So Trip Davis has got it. Now Bluston Miller from the left wing or left side, left corner, whatever. Down to Cameron on the high post. Bluston Miller for three from the left wing is off the back iron. Rebound, Nate Lester. Good offensive rebound there. Got the lucky bounce and we'll take it. This is Zell in the corner. Kicks it to Hightower. Hightower gets. Oh, they're going to say Cameron hooked him with his arm and spun. They're going to they, they're say that Cameron held his guy back and they're going to call an offensive foul. That's number two. Coming in for number three for, um, uh, I want to say Kellyville. It's not Kellyville, though. Keeper. Two Ks. Sorry, getting a drink there. Jack Harris is back in the game for Trent Sweeney. 4-12 left in the game. Still tied at 43. Craig's got a trap going on. They're going to have to uh, get back as Barber just wants to take it. Oh, Bluston picks his pocket. Now Davis has it. Davis going up strong with a layup from the lead. No go. We're going to get a foul on number one, Caden Camden Rector Trip. against Davis. As Davis hit hard. He's slow to get up. He gets up saying, I get hit harder than that in the backfield in a Preg football game. Man. <laughs> he did fall hard. So let's see if Tripp can give us another lead right here. He'll shoot two. Halfway through the fourth quarter as Davis' first free throw is short. I'm telling you, if we hit half our free throws here, we're up by 12 right now. More than that. I wonder how many free throws we've actually shot and missed. That's a really good question. The Davis misses off. the second one. Two rare misses. And that ball was just thrown away as Rector tried to get it to Jack Harris, who wasn't paying attention. It just goes out of bounds. The Kiefer coach is not really excited about that as he's yelling at the referee. Timeout. And we're going to have a timeout keeper on the floor. 3.55 left in the game. Tie ball game. We'll be back after the uh, timeout. With a custom design from Touchdown Graphics, call 580-532-4579 or see them online at touchdowngraphics.com. Touchdown Graphics. It's good. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horse. All right, here we go. We're back after the timeout. Preg's ball, again, tied 43 all. Just under four minutes left in the game. Lester on the right wing. Pump fakes. Hits Ezel on the baseline. Back to Lester. Kiefer now in his zone. Lester's going to take the three from the right wing. It's short. Rebound. Rector. And he's going to be tied up by Bluston Miller. They called that we're a gonna foul. We're going to have a foul. He, and, and, and here we go. We, we've got we've got one of the Kiefer players threw the ball and hit Bluston in the chest with it. But neither, all three of the refs didn't see it. And Coach Greer is furious about it. As after they called a foul, number one kind of stuck it in the gut of Bluston Miller. Bluston's going to get his first foul right there. It's keeper or chain possession. We got full court pressure by Preg now. As Barber tries to inbound, gets it to Harris. Harris guarded by Davis, and then he's trapped. Now Barber has it back. Barber going up against Cameron. He's going to pull up and shoot. It's no good. Rebound, Trip Davis, and Holt's going to get another foul as, as soon as Davis went over the top and grabbed it, Holt fouled him on the way down, and that's going to be his fourth or fifth trail, I believe. And Davis we're going to start shooting forward. free throws now. That's Holt's fourth. Well, it's a good thing we can't hit any. God, we really need to start making our free throws down the stretch. We have to if we want to have any chance of winning this game. Davis like hits that. the first one. Never been so excited to hit a free Man. throw. Man. 
So Prague's got the lead back, 44-43. 3.18 left in the game. Tripp misses the second one, rebound Holt, number 24. He's quickly pressured by Lester and Cameron. They get it out, and they're off and running. This is Routon with the ball. It's a cutting rector underneath. He'll go underneath the goal and hit a wide open layup. And now Keeper's got the lead back, 45-44. Three minutes left. Davis from in the corner, guarded by Rector this time. Again, Kiefer in like a 2-3 zone now. There we go, Cameron up with a big left-handed. And Cameron's been a little off tonight. Hadn't been able to convert on any of those layups down there as he misses and uh, Kiefer gets the rebound. This is Barber guarded by Bluston Miller this time. Bluston pops it loose, gets the steal, and he holds him. Yes, another foul by Barber. As, as soon as Bluston had him beat, he reaches up, grabs his arm to hold him back. And that's going to be a foul, and Blesson's going to go to the line to shoot some free throws. 2.35 left in the game. That's going to be his third. Blesson hits the first, ties it up at 45. 2.35 left in the game. Trevor McGinnis checks in for Cameron Hightower. Bluston hits the second free throw. Preg up by one. 46-45. Again, just 2.30 left in the game. As Jack Harris is going to bring it up. Looks like Preg has switched back to a man-to-man -man instead of their little half-court trap. Big pressure by Davis on Harris. And Tripp's going to get a foul. That's Tripp's first foul. 15 foul against Preg. Routon has it on the left, guarded by Ezell. Spin move going baseline. Throws up a floater. It's good. Now Kiefer back up by one. This is Bluston. Spin move inside. Goes up strong in the layup. They're going to say it was a clean block. No good. Holt with the rebound for Kiefer. Craig's going to quickly trap. Oh, and Bluston had it. But he got too close to out of bounds. As Jack Harris is screaming at his team for some help. As he was double teamed down there by Davis and Bluston. 157 left. Kiefer up two. Jack Harris takes off running, and he catches a pass. Good backdoor cut to Holt, and it's going to be out of bounds against Tripp Davis as he deflects it out of bounds. And Preg was pretty fortunate to get away with that. So Kiefer set the inbound underneath the uh, Preg goal here. Barber throws it up, and it's deflected around, and Davis, I don't know who he's trying to get it to, but Tripp comes down with it. 148 left in the game. Nate Lester on the left wing. Good pass to Bluston. Now over to Davis for the corner. He pump fakes. Now he's going to dribble. Baseline goes up strong, and that's going to be a block. And bye-bye Holt as he picks up his fifth foul, and Davis is going to the line. He tried to get his feet set and take the charge. He knew Davis was coming, but he couldn't get there in time. 133 left in the game. Hey, is it 47 to 46 trail or 45 to 47? Six, I think. I'm pretty sure it's 46 I'm 47. Pretty sure it is too. So again, Trip Davis, another opportunity to put Preg back ahead by one if he can make both of these, tie it with one. 133 left in the game. Tripp makes the first one and ties it. And the second. Much needed free throws right there by the floor general. And Preg's up one. And we'll see what kind of D they're going to do. No, they're just going to pick him up in a half court man to man. Ezell guarding Routon, I believe. And we have a timeout keeper. 
124 left in the game. Craig holding on to a one-point lead. We'll be back after the timeout. The way you used to access healthcare previously, I think that's kind of out of date. I think Ortho Plus and Calvin were trying to get patients access to him and then have the assurance that you'll be referred to the right people. That's why I think the partnership is so good. When it comes to cellular service, why pay for data you don't use? Pioneer Cellular offers a variety of plans designed to give you the lowest prices on the data you and the others on your plan really need. That's why people all over are switching Pioneer. Pioneer Cellular can save you money on your family plan, no matter how you define family. Do the math. Visit our website at gopioneer.com, call us at 800-641-2732, or stop by a local Pioneer store. Find out how much we can save you. Versatile Networks can handle all of your school or business technology and wiring needs. Expanding into a new building or office space, we would love to give you a free quote for your network wiring. Are your computers outdated? Are your servers slow? Is your network underperforming? Is your wireless network weak? Let Versatile Networks come in and assess the situation. All right, here we go. Keeper with the ball. 124 left. Craig up one. This is Routon working on Ezel. Baseline jumpers off the front and off the back and good. That gives Kiefer a 49-48 lead. Quick. Craig goes quick. One minute left. Blessing's going to drive. and gets mugged at the top of the key. Good steal back by Trip Davis. And Davis is off and running. Behind the back. Goes up big in the lane. Floater is no good. Had his own rebound. We're going to have a foul against Kiefer. Should. Number two, Jack Harris is going to pick yep. up a foul. And Davis, again, gets a chance to make another free throw in two. I think he just fouled out. No, that's his first. They had number or they had Holtz on there still for five. Trip hits the first. Tie ball game, 49 all, 52 seconds left. Trip hits both of them. Back and forth, back and forth, here we go. Keeper's turn now, 49-50, 46 seconds left. Trell's going to get the clock, whereas I'm going to watch the game. 40. Routon's got it. Back to Barber at the top of the key. Now this is Ra uh, Rector. Ooh, and a strip. Oh, Davis almost have it. Rector gets the rebound again. Back to Worley with the layup, and it's good with 28 seconds left. Keeper up by one. Davis has it now. Now Blustin Miller. Blustin's going to go baseline, and we're going to have a timeout. Craig. 20 seconds left. Craig down by one. We'll see what Coach Greer can dial up here. Man. And we'll stick We'll stick here. Man, what a game. You know, like, like we were saying earlier, if, if we could hit half of our free throws, <laughs> this game would even be close. Um, other than that, pretty decent defensive effort by Craig um, until about the last... Two or three minutes as, as, as Kiefer's been able to hit a few of them floaters down there. Yeah. And uh, back and forth we go. And that's the way it's been for about most of the fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, here, let me ask you this, Trill. Would you rather be up by one with 20 seconds left and not have the ball? Or would you rather be down by one with 20 seconds left and have the ball? I'd rather be up by one and not have the ball because Craig's got enough perimeter defense. I think they might be able to squeeze them. But, but if you have the ball, you can control the time. Yes. You're right. So I guess, I, guess, I guess it just depends on whether you think you got a better yeah. offense versus First their ball. defense or vice versa. So you can tell Kiefer is a lot more confident on the offensive side than most teams we played. I would put our three big guys in. I'd put Hightower, Bias, and McGinnis in and tell them not to let anyone near the paint. And I would just, I would let Tripp and Blustin just go at him. So here we go, 20 seconds left. All the way back to Davis across the timeline. Here we go, and it's stolen. Jack Harris stole it from him. And he'll hit the layup. They waved it off. Timeout. They didn't wave it off. Oh, I, I didn't know what the ref was doing. 
So a rare mishap by Tripp. And a really good defensive play by Jack Harris. And now Preg's down by three. And a little time left. So we got to look for some type of a, a three play. Look for him to call that, that face play that Nate likes to call, or Coach Greer, rather. Whether they set up Lester at the top of the key for a three-pointer. That or best case scenario, they call that play, and Lester can draw the foul. Who, who do you think shoots the three? You've got to go for a three. If I'm absolutely having to go for a three. Honestly, I either put Nate in the corner or I put Bleston at the top of the key. I think Bleston at the top of the key is confident enough. I think he could shoot it and try to draw the foul with it. I would be pretty confident. I'd be confident in either of them. I'd, I'd be confident in Tripp shooting it. I'd be confident in Ezell shooting it as well. Those would be my four I would look to probably in that order. Bustin, Nate, Tripp, and then Ezell if I had to. And then maybe Hightower or McGinnis after him. So we'll see what Preg comes out with here. Only 11 seconds left. I guess it's plenty of time to get off a of three. But they'll have to go the full length of the court. And full court man-to-man -man pressure by the Trojans as the ref tells Hightower he can run the baseline. Gets it into Bluston Miller, 10 seconds. Bluston drilling up the right-hand side. Goes back towards the left, and we've got a timeout. Coach Greer, he wanted to move the ball up to halftime. And give him a reset. And Preg will have 6.3 seconds left to get off a good three. That's, that's here. a perfect timeout by Coach Greer. Let him reset. And just about and he just wanted to move the ball up past half court. So they'll inbound it right here at half court this time. So what do you go for here, Big Mike? I mean, I think they call the only play that Preg runs. And that's Run the uh, that where, they, where they drag. They're probably going to put Cameron Hightower at the, at the top of the key at the free throw line along with probably... Oh, Trevor McGinnis or Ezell or Bluston, one of them. And they'll have Lester wrap around down to the underneath the goal, and he'll shoot straight up. And he'll go between the two screeners. They'll close the gate, and he should have a good look right at the top of the key. I mean, unless he's got another, you know, side inbound play. You've got to set some screens on the perimeter and get one of your best shooters open. But not only do you have to look for that, you've got to have a second and maybe a third opportunity because if somebody doesn't get screened or somebody gets through the screen, you've got to have, you have, a, you gotta have a, a next, a next you person gotta have set that there. Fail safe. Or, or even a third, third guy. This is going to be a critical, critical, critical moment right here. This is going to be huge. Y'all might not want to blink. So the ball is on the far court by the Preg bench. Peyton Zell set the inbound. Here we go. Ezell doesn't have any. He's got to throw all the way back to Davis. Davis is going to take off running. Foul. And that's a great, great, great job. Because not only can they get three, he can only score two here. So what's going to happen is Davis is going to intentionally make the first free throw and he's going to intentionally miss the second one and hope for an offensive rebound. This is where Lester, Lester's got that height advantage and he's got the jump. Craig cuts it within two, 53 There's to 51. Coach Greer right there. Yep. But right there, Lester is going to pretty much excel. We've noticed Lester can jump pretty high if he really has to. I think if he hits the front of the rim or even the top of the square, I think Nate can get it and get something. It's going to have to line up just perfectly, and I don't know if they've practiced that or if they're uh, like 100% confident. So I've seen play. several people do it differently. I've seen them throw it really hard off the front of the rim. And try but, to catch it. Well, the con throw. is to that is you have to hit the rim. If the ball doesn't hit the rim, then it's, it's dead ball and it goes the other direction. So you risk the, the chance of – the shooter missing the rim. If he misses it and it just hits the backboard, it's no good. Yeah. So it's got to hit the rim, and then, or you miss it to the left or the right, and you overload one side and try to get a board or a tip in. So if you think that you're, if Tripp's confident enough to bink it right back off the front of the iron, right, either right back to him or right back to Bluston or, so or uh, here's the question: Does Tripp hit the front of the rim and try to get it himself, or does he let Nate get it? That's what he did, and it's got to hit. It's got to hit the rim, just like I said. It has yeah. to hit the rim. So we're going to have to have pressure. He missed the front of the rim. 
So Tripp tried to go really quick with it as soon as he handed in the ball, and then that's, like I said, that's the, uh, the risk you take um, when you throw it, try to hit the front of the rim like that. Yeah. But they didn't really have too many options right there. Right. There were only two I can think of is if you do exactly what he just did, or yeah. like I said, you throw it up on the right or the left-hand side, let it bounce around, and hope the guys your guys could fight for it a can rebound. It hit the backboard, then the rim, right? Or does it have Correct. to hit rim? Position? No, it, you can bank it off the backboard. So but it has to hit the rim before it comes down. That might that might have been an, an option for them if they could have got it. Aim for the top part of the square, let it hit that, hit the front of the rim, and hope somebody. See, that's can a get lot harder, in, in my opinion, than it is to get just bank it off the front of the rim. That's like I said, tri I think Trip just that. missed. He just threw it a little too high there. But another thing is. What he can't cross the line like he just did then Yeah. until the ball hits the rim. So technically it was a lane violation. So it would have to be he's got that and he's already going up it's at the It's got to be up. like throw it, hits the rim, and then he could either go up or just wait for it to come back to it's him. It's got to almost like hit the rim and bounce up instead of just hitting the rim and so coming back. So look for, look for Preg to try to steal this inbound pass. They don't really have any other choice, and they're going to foul immediately as soon as the ball's touched. There it is. So Rector, Preston Miller, a foul. Rector, and he will. I'm not really sure. It's 3.6. They're not in the bonus yet, so they're gonna have to inbound it again. This is the bad, bad thing about not being in the bonus. Jack Harris. Oh, he's got it in the corner. They got him trapped, and then we're gonna have a foul. Blessing kind of got thrown right there. No, yeah, that's what it looked like. He might have tripped. It looks like Davis picks up his second. Jack Harris will go to the line. Man. So if he hits both of these, it's it's over over. If he only makes one, we need a three-pointer. If he misses on both, we'll need two. I don't know if we have any timeouts, but we only have 2.4 seconds left. So this is going to have to be a quick, quick. He missed it intentionally. Ball won't stop. That was almost a foul right there that should have been called. That looked like he kind of got his arm a little bit from up here. So, hey, you, uh, there's no timeouts. So you're going to have to throw one. Oh. Get down there and throw it. He's just going to have to chunk one at the goal. This is not how you do that. Short. And Craig loses. gets defeated by Kiefer, 51-53, to 53, as I have no idea why we're throwing the ball in the backcourt with 1.1 seconds left. But it is what it is. It was a good comeback by the Red Devils. Unfortunately, it's in defeat as Kiefer wins a well-deserved game and wins the championship. Craig will settle for second, and the girls won third. So can't really gripe about second, third finishes. So Preg suffer, the guys suffer their first defeat of the season um, at the hands of the Trojans. All right, guys. Well, I got to get up at five o'clock in the morning. Um, we'll kind of leave the stream running while we kind of clean them up for a second, so you can see this. But uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. So thanks for watching the tournament, guys, and we will see you guys Tuesday night at Chandler, I believe. See y'all then.